Amsterdam, is the capital and most populous city of the Netherlands, with a population of 872,680 within the city proper, 1,558,755 in the urban area, and 2,480,394 in the metropolitan area. Found within the Dutch province of North Holland, Amsterdam is colloquially referred to as the Venice of the North, due to the large number of canals which form a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Amsterdam was founded at the Amstel, that was dammed to control flooding, the city's name derives from the Amstel Dam. Originating as a small fishing village in the late 12th century, Amsterdam became one of the most important ports in the world, during the Dutch Golden Age of the 17th century, and became the leading center for the finance and trade sectors. In the 19th and 20th centuries, the city expanded and many new neighborhoods and suburbs were planned and built. The 17th century canals of Amsterdam and the 1920th century defense line of Amsterdam are on the UNESCO World Heritage List. Sloten, annexed in 1921 by the municipality of Amsterdam, is the oldest part of the city, dating to the 9th century. Amsterdam's main attractions include its historic canals, the Rijksmuseum, the Van Gogh Museum, the Stedelijke Museum, Hermitage Amsterdam, the Concertgebouw, the Anne Frank House, the Schietvaart Museum, the Amsterdam Museum, the Heineken Experience, the Royal Palace of Amsterdam, Natura Artis Magistra, Hortus Botanicus Amsterdam, Nemo, the Red Light District and many cannabis coffee shops. It drew more than 5 million international visitors in 2014. The city is also well known for its nightlife and festival activity, with several of its nightclubs among the world's most famous. Primarily known for its artistic heritage, elaborate canal system and narrow houses with gable facades, well-preserved legacies of the city's 17th century golden age. These characteristics are arguably responsible for attracting millions of Amsterdam's visitors annually. Cycling is key to the city's character, and there are numerous biking paths and lanes spread throughout the entire city. The Amsterdam Stock Exchange is considered the oldest modern securities market stock exchange in the world. As the commercial capital of the Netherlands and one of the top financial centers in Europe, Amsterdam is considered an alpha world city by the Globalization and World Cities Study Group. The city is also the cultural capital of the Netherlands. Many large Dutch institutions have their headquarters in the city, including, the Philips Conglomerate, Axo Nobel, Booking.com, TomTom, and ING. Moreover, many of the world's largest companies are based in Amsterdam or have established their European headquarters in the city, such as leading technology companies Uber, Netflix, and Tesla. In 2012, Amsterdam was ranked the second best city to live in by the Economist Intelligence Unit and 12th globally on quality of living for environment and infrastructure by Mercer. The city was ranked fourth place globally as top tech hub in the Savills Tech Cities 2019 report, and third in innovation by Australian innovation agency Too Thin No in their Innovation Cities Index 2009. The port of Amsterdam is the fifth largest in Europe. The KLM hub and Amsterdam's main airport, Schiphol, is the Netherlands' busiest airport as well as the third busiest in Europe and 11th busiest airport in the world. The Dutch capital is considered one of the most multicultural cities in the world, with at least 177 nationalities represented. A few of Amsterdam's notable residents throughout history include painters Rembrandt and Van Gogh, the diarist and Frank, and philosopher Baruch Spinoza. Chapter 1 History Chapter 1 Section 1 Prehistory Due to its geographical location in what used to be wet peatland, the founding of Amsterdam is of a younger age than the founding of other urban centers in the Low Countries. However, in and around the area of what later became Amsterdam, local farmers settled as early as three millennia ago. They lived along the prehistoric A River and upstream of its tributary Amstel. The prehistoric A was a shallow and quiet stream in peatland behind beech ridges. This secluded area could grow there into an important local settlement center, 
especially in the Late Bronze Age, the Iron Age and the Roman Age. Neolithic and Roman artifacts have also been found downstream of this area, in the prehistoric Amstel bedding under Amsterdam's Domrock and Rokin, such as shards of Bell Beaker culture pottery and a granite grinding stone. But the location of these artifacts around the river banks of the Amstel probably point to a presence of a modest semi-permanent or seasonal settlement of the previous mentioned local farmers. A permanent settlement would not have been possible, since the river mouth and the banks of the Amstel in this period in time were too wet for permanent habitation. Chapter 1 Section 2 – Etymology and Founding The origins of Amsterdam is linked to the development of the peatland called Amistel, meaning watery area, from a river plus stele site at a shoreline, river bank. In this area, land reclamation started as early as the late 10th century. Amistel was located along a side arm of the A. This side arm took the name from the eponymous land, Amstel. Amistel was inhabited by farmers, who lived more inland and more upstream, where the land was not as wet as at the banks of the downstream river mouth. These farmers were starting the reclamation around upstream Oudekerk under Amstel, and later at the other side of the river at Amstelveen. The Van Amstel family, known in documents by this name since 1019, held the stewardship in this northwestern of the ecclesiastical district of the Bishop of Utrecht. The family later served also under the Count of Holland. A major turning point in the development of the Amstel River mouth is the All Saints Flood of 1170. In an extremely short period of time, the shallow River A turned into a wide estuary, which from then on offered the Amstel an open connection to the Zuiderzee, Isel and waterways further afield. This made the water flow of the Amstel more active, so excess water could be drained better. With drier banks, the downstream Amstel mouth became attractive for permanent habitation. Moreover, the river had grown from an insignificant peat stream into a junction of international waterways. A settlement was built here immediately after the landscape change of 1170, and right from the start of its foundation it focused on traffic, production and trade, not on farming, as opposed to how communities had lived further upstream for the past 200 years and northward for thousands of years. The construction of a dam at the mouth of the Amstel, eponymously named Dam, is historically estimated to have occurred between 1264 and 1275. The settlement first appeared in a document concerning a road toll granted by the Count of Holland Floris V to the residents op at Amstel a dam at the dam in the Amstel or at the dam of Amstelland. This allowed the inhabitants of the village to travel freely through the county of Holland, paying no tolls at bridges, locks and dams. By 1327, the name had developed into Amsterdam. Chapter 1 Section 3 Middle Ages Amsterdam was granted city rights in either 1300 or 1306. From the 14th century on, Amsterdam flourished, largely from trade with the Hanseatic League. In 1345, an alleged Eucharistic miracle in Calvastra rendered the city an important place of pilgrimage until the adoption of the Protestant faith. The miracle devotion went underground but was kept alive. In the 19th century, especially after the Jubilee of 1845, the devotion was revitalized and became an important national point of reference for Dutch Catholics. The Stiller Om Gang, a silent walk or procession in civil attire, is the expression of the pilgrimage within the Protestant Netherlands since the late 19th century. In the heyday of the silent walk, up to 90,000 pilgrims came to Amsterdam. In the 21st century, this has reduced to about 5,000. Chapter 1 Section 4 Conflict with Spain In the 16th century, the Dutch rebelled against Philip II of Spain and his successors. The main reasons for the uprising were the imposition of new taxes, the tenth penny, and the religious persecution of Protestants by the newly introduced Inquisition. The revolt escalated into the Eighty Years' War, which ultimately led to Dutch independence. Strongly pushed by Dutch revolt leader William the Silent, the Dutch Republic became known for its relative religious tolerance. 
Jews from the Iberian Peninsula, Huguenots from France, prosperous merchants and printers from Flanders, and economic and religious refugees from the Spanish-controlled parts of the Low Countries found safety in Amsterdam. The influx of Flemish printers and the city's intellectual tolerance made Amsterdam a center for the European Free Press. Chapter 1 Section 5, Center of the Dutch Golden Age The 17th century is considered Amsterdam's Golden Age, during which it became the wealthiest city in the Western world. Ships sailed from Amsterdam to the Baltic Sea, North America, and Africa, as well as present-day Indonesia, India, Sri Lanka, and Brazil, forming the basis of a worldwide trading network. Amsterdam's merchants had the largest share in both the Dutch East India Company and the Dutch West India Company. These companies acquired overseas possessions that later became Dutch colonies. Amsterdam was Europe's most important point for the shipment of goods and was the leading financial centre of the Western world. In 1602, the Amsterdam office of the international trading Dutch East India Company became the world's first stock exchange by trading in its own shares. The Bank of Amsterdam started operations in 1609, acting as a full-service bank for Dutch merchant bankers and as a reserve bank. Chapter 1 Section 6 – Decline and Modernization Amsterdam's prosperity declined during the 18th and early 19th centuries. The wars of the Dutch Republic with England and France took their toll on Amsterdam. During the Napoleonic Wars, Amsterdam's significance reached its lowest point, with Holland being absorbed into the French Empire. However, the later establishment of the United Kingdom of the Netherlands in 1815 marked a turning point. The end of the 19th century is sometimes called Amsterdam's Second Golden Age. New museums, a railway station, and the Concertgebouw were built, in this same time, the Industrial Revolution reached the city. The Amsterdam Rhine Canal was dug to give Amsterdam a direct connection to the Rhine, and the North Sea Canal was dug to give the port a shorter connection to the North Sea. Both projects dramatically improved commerce with the rest of Europe and the world. In 1906, Joseph Conrad gave a brief description of Amsterdam as seen from the seaside, in the mirror of the sea. Chapter 1 Section 7, 20th Century Present Shortly before the First World War, the city started to expand again, and new suburbs were built. Even though the Netherlands remained neutral in this war, Amsterdam suffered a food shortage, and heating fuel became scarce. The shortages, sparked riots in which several people were killed. These riots are known as the Arda Pella Prua. People started looting stores and warehouses in order to get supplies, mainly food. On 1 January 1921, after a flood in 1916, the depleted municipalities of Dergedam, Holysloot, Zunderdorp, and Schellingwood, all lying north of Amsterdam, were, at their own request, annexed to the city. Between the wars, the city continued to expand, most notably to the west of the Jordan district in the Frederick Hendrik Bert and surrounding neighborhoods. Nazi Germany invaded the Netherlands on 10 May 1940 and took control of the country. Some Amsterdam citizens sheltered Jews, thereby exposing themselves and their families to a high risk of being imprisoned or sent to concentration camps. More than 100,000 Dutch Jews were deported to Nazi concentration camps, of whom some 60,000 lived in Amsterdam. In response, the Dutch Communist Party organized the February strike attended by 300,000 people to protest against the raids. Perhaps the most famous deportee was the young Jewish girl and Frank, who died in the Bergen-Belsen concentration camp. At the end of the Second World War, communication with the rest of the country broke down, and food and fuel became scarce. Many citizens traveled to the countryside to forage. Dogs, cats, raw sugar beets, and tulip bulbs, cooked to a pulp, were consumed to stay alive. Many trees in Amsterdam were cut down for fuel, and wood was taken from the houses, apartments and other buildings of deported Jews. Many new suburbs, such as Osdorp, Slotterweert, Slottermeer, and Guzenveld, 
were built in the years after the Second World War. These suburbs contained many public parks and wide open spaces, and the new buildings provided improved housing conditions with larger and brighter rooms, gardens, and balconies. Because of the war and other events of the 20th century, almost the entire city center had fallen into disrepair. As society was changing, politicians and other influential figures made plans to redesign large parts of it. There was an increasing demand for office buildings, and also for new roads, as the automobile became available to most people. A metro started operating in 1977 between the new suburb of Bijmermeer in the city's Zuidust exclave and the center of Amsterdam. Further plans were to build a new highway above the metro to connect Amsterdam Central, and the city center with other parts of the city. The required large-scale demolitions began in Amsterdam's former Jewish neighborhood. Smaller streets, such as the Jodenbreestra and Wiesberstra, were widened and almost all houses and buildings were demolished. At the peak of the demolition, the new Umartrellen broke out, the rioters expressed their fury about the demolition caused by the restructuring of the city. As a result, the demolition was stopped and the highway into the city's center was never fully built, only the metro was completed. Only a few streets remained widened. The new city hall was built on the almost completely demolished water loop line. Meanwhile, large private organizations, such as Stagestel Amsterdam, were founded to restore the entire city center. Although the success of this struggle is visible today, efforts for further restoration are still ongoing. The entire city center has reattained its former splendor and, as a whole, is now a protected area. Many of its buildings have become monuments, and in July 2010 the Grattan Gordel was added to the UNESCO World Heritage List. In the 21st century, the Amsterdam city center has attracted large numbers of tourists, between 2012 and 2015, the annual number of visitors rose from 10 to 17 million. Real estate prices have surged, and local shops are making way for tourist-oriented ones, making the center unaffordable for the city's inhabitants. These developments have evoked comparisons with Venice, a city thought to be overwhelmed by the tourist influx. Construction of a new metro line connecting the part of the city north of the A to its southern part was started in 2003. The project was controversial because its cost had exceeded its budget by a factor 3 by 2008, because of fears of damage to buildings in the center, and because construction had to be halted and restarted multiple times. The new metro line was completed in 2018. Since 2014, renewed focus has been given to urban regeneration and renewal, especially in areas directly bordering the city center, such as Frederick Hendrik Burt. This urban renewal and expansion of the traditional center of the city, with the construction on artificial islands of the new Eastern Iberg neighborhood, is part of the Structural Vision Amsterdam 2040 initiative. Chapter 2 Geography. Amsterdam is located in the Western Netherlands, in the province of North Holland, the capital of which is not Amsterdam, but rather Haarlem. The river Amstel ends in the city centre and connects to a large number of canals that eventually terminate in the A. Amsterdam is about two metres below sea level. The surrounding land is flat as it is formed of large polders. A man made forest, Omsterdamse Bos, is in the southwest. Amsterdam is connected to the North Sea through the Long North Sea Canal. Amsterdam is intensely urbanized, as is the Amsterdam metropolitan area surrounding the city. Comprising 219.4 square kilometers of land, the city proper has 4,457 inhabitants per square kilometer and 2,275 houses per square kilometer. Parks and nature reserves make up 12% of Amsterdam's land area. Chapter 2 Section 1 – Water Amsterdam has more than 100 kilometers of canals, most of which are navigable by boat. The city's three main canals are the Prinsengracht, Herengracht, and Kiesersgracht. In the Middle Ages, Amsterdam was surrounded by a moat, called the Singel, which now forms the innermost ring in the city, 
and gives the city center a horseshoe shape. The city is also served by a seaport. It has been compared with Venice, due to its division into about 90 islands, which are linked by more than 1,200 bridges. Chapter 2 Section 2 Climate Amsterdam has an oceanic climate strongly influenced by its proximity to the North Sea to the west, with prevailing westerly winds. Amsterdam, as well as most of the North Holland province, lies in USDA hardiness zone 8b. Frosts mainly occur during spells of easterly or northeasterly winds from the inner European continent. Even then, because Amsterdam is surrounded on three sides by large bodies of water, as well as having a significant heat island effect, nights rarely fall below minus 5 degrees Celsius, while it could easily be minus 12 degrees Celsius in Hilversum, 25 kilometers southeast. Summers are moderately warm with a number of hot and humid days every month. The average daily high in August is 22.1 degrees Celsius, and 30 degrees Celsius or higher is only measured on average on 2.5 days, placing Amsterdam in AHS heat zone 2. The record extremes range from minus 19.7 degrees Celsius to 36.3 degrees Celsius. Days with more than 1 mm of precipitation are common, on average 133 days per year. Amsterdam's average annual precipitation is 838 mm. A large part of this precipitation falls as light rain or brief showers. Cloudy and damp days are common during the cooler months of October through March. Chapter 3 Demographics Chapter 3 Section 1 Historical Population In 1300, Amsterdam's population was around 1,000 people. While many towns in Holland experienced population decline during the 15th and 16th centuries, Amsterdam's population grew, mainly due to the rise of the profitable Baltic maritime trade after the Burgundian victory in the Dutch Hanseatic War. Still, the population of Amsterdam was only modest compared to the towns and cities of Flanders and Brabant, which comprised the most urbanized area of the Low Countries. This changed when, during the Dutch Revolt, Many people from the southern Netherlands fled to the north, especially after Antwerp fell to Spanish forces in 1585. Jewish people from Spain, Portugal and Eastern Europe similarly settled in Amsterdam, as did Germans and Scandinavians. In 30 years, Amsterdam's population more than doubled between 1585 and 1610. By 1600, its population was around 50,000. During the 1660s, Amsterdam's population reached 200,000. The city's growth leveled off and the population stabilized around 240,000 for most of the 18th century. In 1750, Amsterdam was the fourth largest city in Western Europe, behind London, Paris, and Naples. This was all the more remarkable as Amsterdam was neither the capital city nor the seat of government of the Dutch Republic which itself was a much smaller state than England, France or the Ottoman Empire. In contrast to those other metropolises, Amsterdam was also surrounded by large towns such as Leiden, Rotterdam, Haarlem and Utrecht. The city's population declined in the early 19th century, dipping under 200,000 in 1820. By the second half of the 19th century, industrialization spurred renewed growth. Amsterdam's population hit an all-time high of 872,000 in 1959, before declining in the following decades due to government-sponsored suburbanization to so-called growy kernin such as Pomerent and Almere. Between 1970 and 1980, Amsterdam experienced its sharp population decline, peaking at a net loss of 25,000 people in 1973. By 1985 the city had only 675,570 residents. This was soon followed by reurbanization and gentrification, leading to renewed population growth in the 2010s. Also in the 2010s, much of Amsterdam's population growth was due to immigration to the city. Amsterdam's population failed to beat the expectations of 873,000 in 2019. 
Chapter 3 Section 2, Immigration In the 16th and 17th century, non-Dutch immigrants to Amsterdam were mostly Huguenots, Flemings, Sephardi Jews, and Westphalians. Huguenots came after the Edict of Fontainebleau in 1685, while the Flemish Protestants came during the Eighty Years' War. The Westphalians came to Amsterdam mostly for economic reasons, their influx continued through the 18th and 19th centuries. Before the Second World War, 10% of the city population was Jewish. Just 20% of them survived the Shoah. The first mass immigration in the 20th century was by people from Indonesia, who came to Amsterdam after the independence of the Dutch East Indies in the 1940s and 1950s. In the 1960s guest workers from Turkey, Morocco, Italy, and Spain emigrated to Amsterdam. After the independence of Suriname in 1975, a large wave of Surinamese settled in Amsterdam, mostly in the Bijouma area. Other immigrants, including refugees asylum seekers and illegal immigrants, came from Europe, America, Asia, and Africa. In the 1970s and 1980s, many old Amsterdamers moved to new cities like Almere and Pormerent, prompted by the third planological bill of the Dutch government. This bill promoted suburbanization and arranged for new developments in so-called Groei Kernin, literally cause of growth. Young professionals and artists moved into neighborhoods to Pijp and the Jordaan abandoned by these Amsterdamers. The non-Western immigrants settled mostly in the social housing projects in Amsterdam West and the Bijelma. Today, people of non-Western origin make up approximately one-fifth of the population of Amsterdam, and more than 30% of the city's children. Ethnic Dutch now make up a minority of the total population, although by far the largest one. Only one in three inhabitants under 15 is an autochthon, or a person who has two parents of Dutch origin. Segregation along ethnic lines is clearly visible, with people of non-Western origin, considered a separate group by Statistics Netherlands, concentrating in specific neighborhoods especially in New West, Zeeburg, Vigilma and in certain areas of Amsterdam Nord. In 2000, Christians formed the largest religious group in the city. The next largest religion was Islam, most of whose followers were Sunni. In 2015, Christians formed the largest religious group in the city. The next largest religion was Islam, most of whose followers were Sunni. Chapter 3 Section 3, Religion In 1578, the largely Catholic city of Amsterdam joined the revolt against Spanish rule, late in comparison to other major northern Dutch cities. Catholic priests were driven out of the city. Following the Dutch takeover, all churches were converted to Protestant worship. Calvinism was declared the main religion, although Catholicism was not forbidden and priests allowed to serve, the Catholic hierarchy was prohibited. This led to the establishment of Schulkirchen, covered religious buildings that were hidden in pre-existing buildings. Catholics, some Jewish and dissenting Protestants worshipped in such buildings. A large influx of foreigners of many religions came to 17th century Amsterdam, in particular Sephardic Jews from Spain and Portugal, Huguenots from France, Lutherans, Mennonites, as well as Protestants from across the Netherlands. This led to the establishment of many non-Dutch speaking churches. In 1603, the Jewish received permission to practice their religion in the city. In 1639, the first synagogue was consecrated. The Jews came to call the town Jerusalem of the West apostrophe dot as they became established in the city, other Christian denominations used converted Catholic chapels to conduct their own services. The oldest English language church congregation in the world outside the United Kingdom is found at the Begijanoff. Regular services there are still offered in English under the auspices of the Church of Scotland. Being Calvinists, the Huguenots soon integrated into the Dutch Reformed Church, though often retaining their own congregations. Some, commonly referred by the moniker Walloon, are recognizable today as they offer occasional services in French. In the second half of the 17th century, Amsterdam experienced an influx of Ashkenazim, Jews from Central and Eastern Europe. 
Jews often fled the pogroms in those areas. The first Ashkenazis who arrived in Amsterdam were refugees from the Kamelnitsky uprising occurring in Ukraine and the Thirty Years' War, which devastated much of Central Europe. They not only founded their own synagogues, but had a strong influence on the Amsterdam dialect adding a large Yiddish local vocabulary. Despite an absence of an official Jewish ghetto, most Jews preferred to live in the eastern part, which used to be the center of medieval Amsterdam. The main street of this Jewish neighborhood was Joden Breestra. The neighborhood comprised the Waterloo Line, and the Niu Markt. Buildings in this neighborhood fell into disrepair after the Second World War a large section of the neighborhood, was demolished, during the construction of the metro system. This led to riots, and as a result the original plans for large-scale reconstruction were abandoned by the government. The neighborhood was rebuilt with smaller-scale residence buildings on the basis of its original layout. Catholic churches in Amsterdam have been constructed since the restoration of the Episcopal hierarchy in 1853. One of the principal architects behind the city's Catholic churches, Kuipers, was also responsible for the Amsterdam Central Station and the Rijksmuseum. In 1924, the Catholic Church hosted the International Eucharistic Congress in Amsterdam. Numerous Catholic prelates visited the city, where festivities were held in churches and stadiums. Catholic processions on the public streets, however, were still forbidden under law at the time. Only in the 20th century was Amsterdam's relation to Catholicism normalized, but despite its far larger population size, the Episcopal See of the city was placed in the provincial town of Haarlem. Historically, Amsterdam has been predominantly Christian, in 1900 Christians formed the largest religious group in the city, Dutch Reformed Church formed 45% of the city population, while the Catholic Church formed 25% of the city population. In recent times, religious demographics in Amsterdam have been changed by immigration from former colonies. Hinduism has been introduced from the Hindu diaspora from Suriname and several distinct branches of Islam have been brought from various parts of the world. Islam is now the largest non-Christian religion in Amsterdam. The large community of Ghanaian immigrants have established African churches, often in parking garages in the Bijelma area. Chapter 3 Section 4 Diversity and Immigration Amsterdam experienced an influx of religions and cultures after the Second World War. With 180 different nationalities, Amsterdam is home to one of the widest varieties of nationalities of any city in the world. The proportion of the population of immigrant origin in the city proper is about 50% and 88% of the population are Dutch citizens. Amsterdam has been one of the municipalities in the Netherlands which provided immigrants with extensive and free Dutch language courses, which have benefited many immigrants. Chapter 4 Cityscape and Architecture Amsterdam fans out south from the Amsterdam Central Station and Domrock, the main street off the station. The oldest area of the town is known as De Wallen. It lies to the east of Domrock and contains the city's famous red light district. To the south of De Wallen is the old Jewish quarter of Waterloo Line. The medieval and colonial age canals of Amsterdam, known as Grockton, embraces the heart of the city where homes have interesting gables. Beyond the Grattan Gordel are the former working-class areas of Jordan and De Pige. The museum line with the city's major museums, the Fondel Park, a 19th-century park named after the Dutch writer Joost van den Vondel, as well as the Plantage neighborhood, with the zoo, are also located outside the Grattan Gordel. Several parts of the city, and the surrounding urban area are polders. This can be recognized by the suffix meer which means lake, as in Arlesmeer, Bijemermeer, Haarlemmermeer, and Watergrafsmeer. Chapter 4 Section 1 Canals The Amsterdam Canal System is the result of conscious city planning. In the early 17th century, when immigration was at a peak, a comprehensive plan was developed that was based on four concentric half circles of canals with their ends emerging at the A Bay. Known as the Grattan Gordel, Three of the canals were mostly for residential development, the Herengrocht, 
Kiesersgrat and Prinsengracht. The fourth and outermost canal is the Singelgrat, which is often not mentioned on maps because it is a collective name for all canals in the outer ring. The Singelgrat should not be confused with the oldest and inmost canal, the Singel. The canals served for defense, water management and transport. The defenses took the form of a moat and earthen dikes, with gates at transit points, but otherwise no masonry superstructures. The original plans have been lost, so historians, such as Ed Tavern, need to speculate on the original intentions, it is thought that the considerations of the layout were purely practical and defensive rather than ornamental. Construction started in 1613 and proceeded from west to east, across the breadth of the layout, like a gigantic windshield wiper as the historian Gert Mack calls it, and not from the center outwards, as a popular myth has it. The canal construction in the southern sector was completed by 1656. Subsequently, the construction of residential buildings proceeded slowly. The eastern part of the concentric canal plan, covering the area between the Amstel River and the A Bay, has never been implemented. In the following centuries, the land was used for parks, senior citizens' homes, theatres, other public facilities, and waterways without much planning. Over the years, several canals have been filled in, becoming streets or squares, such as the new was eased Vorburg Wall and the Spau. Chapter 4 Section 2 Expansion After the development of Amsterdam's canals in the 17th century, the city did not grow beyond its borders for two centuries. During the 19th century, Samuel Sarfati devised a plan based on the grandeur of Paris and London at that time. The plan envisaged the construction of new houses, public buildings and streets just outside the Grattan Gordel. The main aim of the plan, however, was to improve public health. Although the plan did not expand the city, it did produce some of the largest public buildings to date, like the Palais vor Volksfleisch. Following Sarfati, civil engineers Jacobus van Niftrich and Jan Kolf designed an entire ring of 19th century neighborhoods surrounding the city's center, with the city preserving the ownership of all land outside the 17th century limit, thus firmly controlling development. Most of these neighborhoods became home to the working class. In response to overcrowding, Two plans were designed at the beginning of the 20th century which were very different from anything Amsterdam had ever seen before, Plan Zert and West. These plans involved the development of new neighborhoods consisting of housing blocks for all social classes. After the Second World War, large new neighborhoods were built in the western, southeastern, and northern parts of the city. These new neighborhoods were built to relieve the city's shortage of living space and give people affordable houses with modern conveniences. The neighborhoods consisted mainly of large housing blocks located among green spaces, connected to wide roads, making the neighborhoods easily accessible by motor car. The western suburbs which were built in that period are collectively called the Westerleidschtu in Steden. The area to the southeast of the city built during the same period is known as the Bijelma. Chapter 4 Section 3 – Architecture Amsterdam has a rich architectural history. The oldest building in Amsterdam is the Oud Kirk, at the heart of the Wallen, consecrated in 1306. The oldest wooden building is Het Outen House at the Begijenhof. It was constructed around 1425 and is one of only two existing wooden buildings. It is also one of the few examples of Gothic architecture in Amsterdam. The oldest stone building of the Netherlands, the Morian is built in Zhetogombos. In the 16th century, wooden buildings were raised and replaced with brick ones. During this period, Many buildings were constructed in the architectural style of the Renaissance. Buildings of this period are very recognizable with their stepped gable facades, which is the common Dutch Renaissance style. Amsterdam quickly developed its own Renaissance architecture. These buildings were built according to the principles of the architect Hendrik de Kieser. One of the most striking buildings designed by Hendrik de Kieser is the Westerkirk. In the 17th century Baroque architecture became very popular, as it was elsewhere in Europe. 
This roughly coincided with Amsterdam's golden age. The leading architects of this style in Amsterdam were Jacob van Kampen, Philips Ving Boons, and Daniel Stalpert. Philip Ving Boons designed splendid merchants' houses throughout the city. A famous building in Baroque style in Amsterdam is the Royal Palace on Dam Square. Throughout the 18th century, Amsterdam was heavily influenced by French culture. This is reflected in the architecture of that period. Around 1815, architects broke with the Baroque style and started building in different neo-styles. Most Gothic-style buildings date from that era, and are therefore said to be built in a neo-Gothic style. At the end of the 19th century, the Dujon Still or Art Nouveau style became popular and many new buildings were constructed in this architectural style. Since Amsterdam expanded rapidly during this period, new buildings adjacent to the city center were also built in this style. The houses in the vicinity of the Museum Square in Amsterdam Oudzert are an example of Dujon Still. The last style that was popular in Amsterdam before the modern era was Art Deco. Amsterdam had its own version of the style, which was called the Omsterdamse School. Whole districts were built this style, such as the Rivière Bert. A notable feature of the facades of buildings designed in Omsterdamse School is that they are highly decorated and ornate, with oddly shaped windows and doors. The old city center is the focal point of all the architectural styles before the end of the 19th century. Dujon Still and Georgian are mostly found outside the city's center in the neighborhoods built in the early 20th century, although there are also some striking examples of these styles in the city center. Most historic buildings in the city center and nearby are houses, such as the famous merchants' houses lining the canals. Chapter 4 Section 4, Parks and Recreational Areas Amsterdam has many parks, open spaces, and squares throughout the city. The Fondel Park, the largest park in the city, is located in the Udzert neighborhood and is named after the 17th-century Amsterdam author Joost van den Vondel. Yearly, the park has around 10 million visitors. In the park is an open-air theater, a playground and several hawker facilities. In the Zert borough, is the Beatrix Park, named after Queen Beatrix. Between Amsterdam and Amstelveen is the Amsterdamse Bos, the largest recreational area in Amsterdam. Annually, almost 4.5 million people visit the park, which has a size of 1.000 hectares and is approximately three times the size of Central Park. The Amstel Park in the Zert Borough houses the Rika Windmill, which dates to 1636. Other parks include the Sarfati Park in the Depeit neighborhood, the Ooster Park in the Oost Borough, and the Wester Park in the Wester Park neighborhood. The city has three beaches, Nemo Beach, City Beach Het Stenenhoeft and Blijgeberg, all located in the Centrum Borough. The city has many open squares. The namesake of the city as the site of the original dam, Dam Square, is the main city square and has the Royal Palace and National Monument. Museumplein hosts various museums, including the Rijksmuseum, Van Gogh Museum, and Stedelijke Museum. Other squares include Rembrandtplein, Muntplein, Nieuwmarkt, Leidsplein, Spau, and Waterlooplein. Also, Near to Amsterdam is the Neckerville Estate Conservation Project. Chapter 5, Economy Amsterdam is the financial and business capital of the Netherlands. According to the 2007 European Cities Monitor, an annual location survey of Europe's leading companies carried out by global real estate consultant Cushman and Wakefield, Amsterdam is one of the top European cities in which to locate an international business, ranking fifth in the survey. With the survey determining London, Paris, Frankfurt and Barcelona as the four European cities surpassing Amsterdam in this regard. A substantial number of large corporations and banks headquarters are located in the Amsterdam area, including, Axo Nobel, Heineken International, ING Group, ABN AMRO, TomTom, Delta Lloyd Group, Booking.com and Philips. 
Although many small offices remain along the historic canals, centrally based companies have increasingly relocated outside Amsterdam's city centre. Consequently, the Zuiders has become the new financial and legal hub of Amsterdam, with the country's five largest law firms and several subsidiaries of large consulting firms, such as Boston Consulting Group and Accenture, as well as the World Trade Center located in the Zuiders district. In addition to the Zuiders, there are three smaller financial districts in Amsterdam. Around Amsterdam Sloterdijk Railway Station where one can find the offices of several newspapers, such as De Telegraaf, as well as those of Deloitte, the Gemientelijk Vervoerbedrijf, and the Dutch tax offices. Around the Johan Cruyff Arena in Amsterdam Zuidust, with the headquarters of ING Group. Around the Amstel Railway Station in the Amsterdam Oost, district to the east of the historical city. Amsterdam's tallest building, the Rembrandt Tower is located here. As are the headquarters of Philips, the Dutch multinational conglomerate. Amsterdam has been a leading city to reduce the use of raw materials and has created a plan to become a circular city by 2050. The adjoining municipality of Amstelveen is the location of KPMG International's global headquarters. Other non-Dutch companies have chosen to settle in communities surrounding Amsterdam since they allow freehold property ownership, whereas Amsterdam retains ground rent. The Amsterdam Stock Exchange, now part of Euronext, is the world's oldest stock exchange and, due to Brexit, has overtaken LSE as the largest bourse in Europe. It is near Dam Square in the city centre. Chapter 5 Section 1, Port of Amsterdam The Port of Amsterdam is the fourth largest port in Europe, the 38th largest port in the world and the second largest port in the Netherlands by metric tons of cargo. In 2014, the port of Amsterdam had a cargo throughput of 97,4 million tons of cargo, which was mostly bulk cargo. Amsterdam has the biggest cruise port in the Netherlands with more than 150 cruise ships every year. In 2019, the new lock in Amoden opened, since then, the port has been able to grow to 125 million tons in capacity. Chapter 5 Section 2 – Tourism Amsterdam is one of the most popular tourist destinations in Europe, receiving more than 5.34 million international visitors annually, this is excluding the 16 million daytrippers visiting the city every year. The number of visitors has been growing steadily over the past decade. This can be attributed to an increasing number of European visitors. Two-thirds of the hotels are located in the city's centre. Hotels with four or five stars contribute 42% of the total beds available and 41% of the overnight stays in Amsterdam. The room occupation rate was 85% in 2017, up from 78% in 2006. The majority of tourists originate from Europe. The largest group of non-European visitors come from the United States, accounting for 14% of the total. Certain years have a theme in Amsterdam to attract extra tourists. For example, the year 2006 was designated Rembrandt 400, to celebrate the 400th birthday of Rembrandt van Rijn. Some hotels offer special arrangements or activities during these years. The average number of guests per year staying at the four campsites around the city range from 12,000 to 65,000. Chapter 5 Section 2 Subsection 2 De Wallen De Wallen, also known as Walleches or Rosboert, is a designated area for legalized prostitution, and is Amsterdam's largest and best-known red-light district. This neighborhood has become a famous attraction for tourists. It consists of a network of canals, streets, and alleys containing several hundred small, one-room apartments rented by sex workers who offer their services from behind a window or glass door, typically illuminated with red lights. In recent years, the city government has been closing and repurposing the famous red light district windows in an effort to clean up the area and reduce the amount of party and sex tourism. Chapter 5 Section 3 Retail 
Shops in Amsterdam range from large high-end department stores such as De Bijenkorf founded in 1870 to small speciality shops. Amsterdam's high-end shops are found in the streets PC Hoofdstra and Cornelis Skytstra, which are located in the vicinity of the Fondel Park. One of Amsterdam's busiest high streets is the narrow, medieval Kalverstra in the heart of the city. Other shopping areas include the Negenstraches and Harlem Adijken and Harlem Astra. Negenstraches are nine narrow streets within the Graten Gordel, the concentric canal system of Amsterdam. The Negenstraches differ from other shopping districts with the presence of a large diversity of privately owned shops. The Harlem Astra and Harlem Adijk were voted best shopping street in the Netherlands in 2011. These streets have as the Negenstraches a large diversity of privately owned shops. However, as the Negenstraches are dominated by fashion stores, the Harlem Astra and Harlem Adijk offer a wide variety of stores, just to name some specialities, candy and other food-related stores, lingerie, sneakers, wedding clothing, interior shops, books, Italian delis, racing and mountain bikes, skatewear, etc. The city also features a large number of open-air markets such as the Albert Koip Market, Westerstra Markt, Ten Katermarkt, and Dappermarkt. Some of these markets are held daily, like the Albert Koip Markt and the Dappermarkt. Others, like the Westerstra Markt, are held every week. Chapter 5 Section 4 Fashion Several fashion brands and designers are based in Amsterdam. Fashion designers include Iris van Herpen, Mart Visser, Victor, and Rolf, Marlies Deckers, and Franz Molinar. Fashion models like Yves Sturm, Doutzen Crows and Kim Neuerda started their careers in Amsterdam. Amsterdam has its garment center in the World Fashion Center. Fashion photographers Ines van Lomsverde and Vinoud Matadin were born in Amsterdam. Chapter 6 Culture during the later part of the 16th century, Amsterdam's Riederijkeskema organized contests between different chambers in the reading of poetry and drama. In 1637, Schauburg, the first theatre in Amsterdam was built, opening on 3 January 1638. The first ballet performances in the Netherlands were given in Schauburg in 1642 with the Ballet of the Five Senses. In the 18th century, French theatre became popular. While Amsterdam was under the influence of German music in the 19th century there were few national opera productions, the Hollandse Opera of Amsterdam was built in 1888 for the specific purpose of promoting Dutch opera. In the 19th century, popular culture was centred on the Nez area in Amsterdam. An improved metronome was invented in 1812 by Dietrich Nicolaus Winkel. The Rijksmuseum, and Stedelijk Museum, were built and opened. In 1888, the Concert for Bauerkest Orchestra, was established. With the 20th century came cinema, radio and television. Though most studios are located in Hilversum and Aalsmeer, Amsterdam's influence on programming is very strong. Many people who work in the television industry live in Amsterdam. Also, the headquarters of the Dutch SBS Broadcasting Group is located in Amsterdam. Chapter 6, Section 1, Museums The most important museums of Amsterdam are located on the Museum Plein, located at the southwestern side of the Rijksmuseum. It was created in the last quarter of the 19th century on the grounds of the former World's Fair. The northeastern part of the square is bordered by the large Rijksmuseum. In front of the Rijksmuseum on the square itself is a long, rectangular pond. This is transformed into an ice rink in winter. The northwestern part of the square is bordered by the Van Gogh Museum, House of Bols Cocktail and Geneva Experience and Costa Diamonds. The southwestern border of the museum square is the Van Balastra, which is a major thoroughfare in this part of Amsterdam. The Concertgebouw, is located across this street from the square. To the southeast of the square are several large houses, one of which contains the American consulate. A parking garage can be found underneath the square, as well as a supermarket. 
The museum plan is covered almost entirely with a lawn, except for the northeastern part of the square which is covered with gravel. The current appearance of the square was realized in 1999, when the square was remodeled. The square itself is the most prominent site in Amsterdam for festivals and outdoor concerts, especially in the summer. Plans were made in 2008 to remodel the square again because many inhabitants of Amsterdam are not happy with its current appearance. The Rijksmuseum possesses the largest and most important collection of classical Dutch art. It opened in 1885. Its collection consists of nearly one million objects. The artist most associated with Amsterdam is Rembrandt, whose work, and the work of his pupils, is displayed in the Rijksmuseum. Rembrandt's masterpiece The Night Watch is one of the top pieces of art of the museum. It also houses paintings from artists like Bartholomus van der Helst, Johannes Vermeer, Franz Hals, Ferdinand Boll, Albert Kuyp, Jacob van Roosdale and Paulus Potter. Aside from paintings, the collection consists of a large variety of decorative art. This ranges from Delftware to giant doll houses from the 17th century. The architect of the Gothic Revival building was P. J. H. Kuypers. The museum underwent a 10-year, 375 million euro renovation starting in 2003. The full collection was reopened to the public on 13 April 2013 and the Rijksmuseum, has remained the most visited museum in Amsterdam with 2.2 million visitors in 2016 and 2.16 million in 2017. Van Gogh lived in Amsterdam for a short while and there is a museum dedicated to his work. The museum is housed in one of the few modern buildings in this area of Amsterdam. The building was designed by Gerrit Rietveld. This building is where the permanent collection is displayed. A new building was added to the museum in 1999. This building, known as the Performance Wing, was designed by Japanese architect Kisho Kurakawa. Its purpose is to house temporary exhibitions of the museum. Some of Van Gogh's most famous paintings, like the Potato Eaters and Sunflowers, are in the collection. The Van Gogh Museum, is the second most visited museum in Amsterdam, not far behind the Rijksmuseum in terms of the number of visits, being approximately 2.1 million in 2016, for example. Next to the Van Gogh Museum stands the Stedelijk Museum. This is Amsterdam's most important museum of modern art. The museum is as old as the square it borders and was opened in 1895. The permanent collection consists of works of art from artists like Piet Mondrian, Karel Appel, and Kozimir Malevich. After renovations lasting several years, the museum opened in September 2012 with a new composite extension, that has been called the bathtub due to its resemblance to one. Amsterdam contains many other museums throughout the city. They range from small museums such as the Wurzitz Museum, the Anne Frank House, and the Rembrandt House Museum, to the very large, like the Tropen Museum, Amsterdam Museum, Hermitage Amsterdam and the Jutz Historisch Museum. The modern styled Nemo is dedicated to child-friendly science exhibitions. Chapter 6, Section 2, Music Amsterdam's musical culture includes a large collection of songs that treat the city nostalgically and lovingly. The 1949 song Arndorm Sterdom Sir Grockton was performed and recorded by many artists, including John Kreidkamp Sr., the best-known version is probably that by Wim Sonnevelt. In the 1950s Johnny Jordan rose to fame with Geef Maymar Amsterdam, which praises the city above all others, Jordan sang especially about his own neighborhood, the Jordan. Colleagues and contemporaries of Johnny include, Tanta Lean and Mank Nellis. Another notable Amsterdam song is Amsterdam by Jacques Brel. A 2011 poll by Amsterdam newspaper Het Perul that trio Beers Oud Wolf was voted Amsterdam's Lige Flied. Notable Amsterdam bands from the modern era include the Osdorp Posse and the X. Uffers Live is a concert hall located near the Johan Cruff Arena. Its main purpose is to serve as a podium for pop concerts for big audiences. 
many famous international artists have performed there. Two other notable venues, Paradiso and the Melkvec are located near the Leidspline. Both focus on broad programming, ranging from indie rock to hip-hop, R&B, and other popular genres. Other more subcultural music venues are Akiai, OT301, Daniwa Anita, Winston Kingdom, and Zaal 100. Jazz has a strong following in Amsterdam, with the Beamhuis being the premier venue. In 2012, Ziggo Dome was opened, also near Amsterdam Arena, a state-of-the-art indoor music arena. Offers Live is also host to many electronic dance music festivals, alongside many other venues. Armin van Buren and Tiesto, some of the world's leading trance DJs hail from the Netherlands and frequently perform in Amsterdam. Each year in October, the city hosts the Amsterdam Dance Event which is one of the leading electronic music conferences and one of the biggest club festivals for electronic music in the world, attracting over 350,000 visitors each year. Another popular dance festival is Five Days Off, which takes place in the venues Paradiso and Melkvec. In the summertime, there are several big outdoor dance parties in or nearby Amsterdam, such as Awakenings, Dance Valley, Mysteryland, Loveland, A Day at the Park, Welcome to the Future, and Valtifist. Amsterdam has a world-class symphony orchestra, the Royal Concertgebouw Orchestra. Their home is the Concertgebouw, which is across the Van Ballastra from the Museum Square. It is considered by critics to be a concert hall with some of the best acoustics in the world. The building contains three halls, Grootzaal, Kleiner Zaal, and Spiegel Zaal. Some 900 concerts and other events per year take place in the Concertgebouw, for a public of over 700,000, making it one of the most visited concert halls in the world. The Opera House of Amsterdam is located adjacent to the City Hall. Therefore, the two buildings combined are often called the Stopera. This huge modern complex, opened in 1986, lies in the former Jewish neighborhood at Waterloo Plein, next to the River Amstel. The Stopera is the home base of Dutch National Opera, Dutch National Ballet and the Holland Symphonia. Musicebouw Antia is a concert hall, which is located in the A near the central station. Its concerts perform mostly modern classical music. Located adjacent to it, is the Beamhuis, a concert hall for improvised and jazz music. Chapter 6, Section 3, Performing Arts Amsterdam has three main theatre buildings. The Stade Schauberg at the Leidsplein is the home base of Toneel Groep Amsterdam. The current building dates from 1894. Most plays are performed in the Grootzaal. The normal program of events encompasses all sorts of theatrical forms. The Stade Schauberg is currently being renovated and expanded. The third theatre space, to be operated jointly with Next Door Melkvec, will open in late 2009 or early 2010. The Dutch National Opera and Ballet, dating from 1986, is the principal opera house and home to Dutch National Opera and Dutch National Ballet. Royal Theatre Carré was built as a permanent circus theatre in 1887 and is currently mainly used for musicals, cabaret performances, and pop concerts. The recently reopened De La Mar Theatre houses more commercial plays and musicals. A new theatre has also moved into the Amsterdam scene in 2014, joining other established venues. Theatre Amsterdam is located in the west part of Amsterdam, on the Danziger Cade. It is housed in a modern building with a panoramic view over the harbour. The theatre is the first ever purpose built venue to showcase a single play entitled Anne the play based on and Frank's life. On the east side of town, there is a small theatre in a converted bathhouse, the Bad Hewis Theatre. The theatre often has English programming. The Netherlands has a tradition of cabaret or kleinkunst, which combines music, storytelling, commentary, theatre and comedy. Cabaret dates back to the 1930s and artists like Wim Can, when Sonnevelt and Toon Hermans were pioneers of this form of art in the Netherlands. 
In Amsterdam is the Kleinkunst Academy and Niederleid Kleinkens Corps. Contemporary popular artists are Joop van T. Heck, Freek de Jonge, Herman Finkers, Hans T. Uwin, Theo Maassen, Herman van Veen, Najib Vali, Raoul Hirtier, Jorgen Raymon, Brigitte Kandorp, and Comedy Train. The English spoken comedy scene was established with the founding of Boom Chicago in 1993. They have their own theatre at Leidsplein? Chapter 6, Section 4, Nightlife Amsterdam is famous for its vibrant and diverse nightlife. Amsterdam has many cafes. They range from large and modern to small and cozy. The typical browner Croeg breathe a more old-fashioned atmosphere with dimmed lights, candles, and somewhat older clientele. These brown cafes mostly offer a wide range of local and international artisanal beers. Most cafes have terraces in summertime. A common sight on the lights blind during summer is a square full of terraces packed with people drinking beer or wine. Many restaurants can be found in Amsterdam as well. Since Amsterdam is a multicultural city, a lot of different ethnic restaurants can be found. Restaurants range from being rather luxurious and expensive to being ordinary and affordable. Amsterdam also possesses many discotheques. The two main nightlife areas for tourists are the Leidsplein and the Rembrandtplein. The Paradiso, Melkweg and Sugar Factory are cultural centers, which turn into discotheques on some nights. Examples of discotheques near the Rembrandtplein are the Escape, Air, John Doe, and Club Abe. Also noteworthy are Panama, Hotel Arena, Trau Amsterdam and Studio 80. In recent years 24-hour clubs opened their doors, most notably Radium de School, Shelter, and Markt Kantijn. Beamhoist located near the central station, with its rich programming hosting the best in the field is considered one of the best jazz clubs in the world. The regularized Warstra is the main street for the LGBT community and nightlife. Chapter 6, Section 5, Festivals in 2008, there were 140 festivals and events in Amsterdam. Famous festivals and events in Amsterdam include Koningsdag, the Holland Festival for the Performing Arts, the yearly Prince Enrat concert in August, the Stiller Omgang, Amsterdam Gay Pride, the Cannabis Cup, and the Uit Markt. On Koningsdag, that is held each year on the 27th of April, Hundreds of thousands of people travel to Amsterdam to celebrate with the city's residents. The entire city becomes overcrowded with people buying products from the free market, or visiting one of the many music concerts. The yearly Holland Festival attracts international artists and visitors from all over Europe. Amsterdam Gay Pride is a yearly local LGBT parade of boats in Amsterdam's canals, held on the first Saturday in August. The annual Uit Markt is a three-day cultural event at the start of the cultural season in late August. It offers previews of many different artists, such as musicians and poets, who perform on podia. Chapter 7, Sports Amsterdam is home of the Eredivisie football club AFC Ajax. The stadium Johan Cruyff Arena is the home of Ajax. It is located in the southeast of the city next to the new Amsterdam Bijlma Arena railway station. Before moving to their current location in 1996, Ajax played their regular matches in the now demolished De Meerstadion in the eastern part of the city or in the Olympic Stadium. In 1928, Amsterdam hosted the Summer Olympics. The Olympic Stadium built for the occasion has been completely restored and is now used for cultural and sporting events, such as the Amsterdam Marathon. In 1920, Amsterdam assisted in hosting some of the sailing events for the Summer Olympics held in neighboring Antwerp, Belgium by hosting events at Bouton A. The city holds the Dam to Dam Run, a 16-kilometer race from Amsterdam to Zandam, as well as the Amsterdam Marathon. The ice hockey team Amstel Tejas play in the Jarpelen Ice Rink. The team competes in the Dutch Ice Hockey Premier League. Speed skating championships have been held on the 400-meter lane of this ice rink. 
Amsterdam holds two American football franchises, the Amsterdam Crusaders and the Amsterdam Panthers. The Amsterdam Pirates baseball team competes in the Dutch Major League. There are three field hockey teams, Amsterdam, Pinnock, and Hurley, who play their matches around the Wagner Stadium in the nearby city of Amstelveen. The basketball team My Guide Amsterdam competes in the Dutch Premier Division, and play their games in the Sport Hallen Zert. There is one rugby club in Amsterdam, which also hosts sports training classes such as RTC and the National Rugby Stadium. Since 1999, the city of Amsterdam honors the best sportsmen and women at the Amsterdam Sports Awards. Boxer Raymond Jovel and field hockey midfielder Carol Thate were the first to receive the awards in 1999. Amsterdam hosted the World Gymnastrada in 1991 and will do so again in 2023. Chapter 7 Section 1, City Government As with all Dutch municipalities, Amsterdam is governed by a directly elected municipal council, a municipal executive board and a government-appointed mayor. The mayor is a member of the municipal executive board, but also has individual responsibilities in maintaining public order. On 27 June 2018, Femke Halsema was appointed as the first woman to be mayor of Amsterdam by the King's Commissioner of North Holland for a six-year term after being nominated by the Amsterdam Municipal Council and began serving a six-year term on 12 July 2018. She replaces Eberhard van der Laan, who was the mayor of Amsterdam from 2010 until his death in October 2017. After the 2014 municipal council elections, a governing majority of D66, VVD and SB was formed, the first coalition without the Labour Party since World War II. Next to the mayor, the municipal executive board consists of eight withouters appointed by the municipal council, four D66 older persons, two VVD older persons and two SB older persons. On the 18th of September 2017, it was announced by Eberhard van der Laan in an open letter to Amsterdam citizens that Kaiser Ollengren would take up his office as acting mayor of Amsterdam with immediate effect due to ill health. Ollengren was succeeded as acting mayor by Eric van der Berg on 26 October 2017 and by Josias van Artsen on 4 December 2017. Unlike most other Dutch municipalities, Amsterdam is subdivided into eight boroughs, called Stades Delanor districts, a system that was implemented gradually in the 1980s to improve local governance. The boroughs are responsible for many activities that had previously been run by the central city. In 2010, the number of Amsterdam boroughs reached 15. 14 of those had their own district council, elected by a popular vote. The 15th, Westport, covers the harbour of Amsterdam and had very few residents. Therefore, it was governed by the Central Municipal Council. Under the borough system, municipal decisions are made at borough level, except for those affairs pertaining to the whole city such as major infrastructure projects, which are the jurisdiction of the central municipal authorities. In 2010, the borough system was restructured, in which many smaller boroughs merged into larger boroughs. In 2014, under a reform of the Dutch Municipalities Act, the Amsterdam boroughs lost much of their autonomous status, as their district councils were abolished. The Municipal Council of Amsterdam voted to maintain the borough system by replacing the district councils with smaller, but still directly elected district committees. Under a municipal ordinance, the new district committees were granted responsibilities through delegation of regulatory and executive powers by the Central Municipal Council. Chapter 7 Section 2, Metropolitan Area Amsterdam is usually understood to refer to the municipality of Amsterdam. Colloquially, some areas within the municipality, such as the town of Dergedam, may not be considered part of Amsterdam. Statistics Netherlands uses three other definitions of Amsterdam, Metropolitan Agglomeration Amsterdam, Greater Amsterdam and the Urban Region Amsterdam. The Amsterdam Department for Research and Statistics uses a fourth conurbation, namely the Stade Regio Amsterdam. The city region is similar to Greater Amsterdam but includes the municipalities of Jaanstad and Wormeland. 
it excludes graft to ripe. The smallest of these areas is the municipality of Amsterdam with a population of 802,938 in 2013. The conurbation had a population of 1,096,042 in 2013. It includes the municipalities of Jaanstot, Wormerland, Oersan, Diemen and Amstelveen only, as well as the municipality of Amsterdam. Greater Amsterdam includes 15 municipalities, and had a population of 1,293,208 in 2013. Though much larger in area, the population of this area is only slightly larger, because the definition excludes the relatively populous municipality of Jaanstot. The largest area by population, the Amsterdam metropolitan area, has a population of 2,33 million. It includes for instance Jaanstot, Wormerland, Mauden, Upkauda, Haarlem, Almere and Leilestad but excludes Graft de Rijp. Amsterdam is part of the conglomerate metropolitan area Randstad, with a total population of 6,659,300 inhabitants. Dot of these various metropolitan area configurations, only the Stades Regio Amsterdam has a formal governmental status. Its responsibilities include regional spatial planning, and the Metropolitan Public Transport Concessions. Chapter 7 Section 3, National Capital Under the Dutch Constitution, Amsterdam is the capital of the Netherlands. Since the 1983 Constitutional Revision, the Constitution mentions Amsterdam and capital in Chapter 2, Article 32, the King's confirmation by oath and his coronation take place in the capital Amsterdam. Previous versions of the Constitution only mentioned the city of Amsterdam. For a royal investiture, therefore, the States General of the Netherlands meets for a ceremonial joint session in Amsterdam. The ceremony traditionally takes place at the Nieuwe Kerk on Dam Square, immediately after the former monarch has signed the act of abdication at the nearby Royal Palace of Amsterdam. Normally, however, the Parliament sits in The Hague, the city which has historically been the seat of the Dutch government, the Dutch monarchy, and the Dutch Supreme Court. Foreign embassies are also located in The Hague. Chapter 7 Section 4 Symbols The coat of arms of Amsterdam is composed of several historical elements. First and centre are three St. Andrew's crosses, aligned in a vertical band on the city's shield. These St. Andrew's crosses can also be found on the city shields of neighbours Amstelveen and Oder Amstel. This part of the coat of arms is the basis of the flag of Amsterdam, flown by the city government, but also as civil ensign for ships registered in Amsterdam. Second is the Imperial Crown of Austria. In 1489, out of gratitude for services and loans, Maximilian I awarded Amsterdam the right to adorn its coat of arms with the king's crown. Then, in 1508, this was replaced with Maximilian's imperial crown when he was crowned Holy Roman Emperor. In the early years of the 17th century, Maximilian's crown in Amsterdam's coat of arms was again replaced, this time with the crown of Emperor Rudolf II, a crown that became the imperial crown of Austria. The lions date from the late 16th century, when city and province became part of the Republic of the Seven United Netherlands. Last came the city's official motto, Heldaftig, Vastbereden, Barmhartig, bestowed on the city in 1947 by Queen Wilhelmina, in recognition of the city's bravery during the Second World War. Chapter 8 Transport Chapter 8 Section 1 Metro, Tram and Bus Currently, there are 16 tram routes and 5 metro routes. All are operated by municipal public transport operator Gemientelijk Vervo Erbedrijf, which also runs the city bus network. Four fare free GVB ferries carry pedestrians and cyclists across the A Lake to the borough of Amsterdam Nord, and two fare charging ferries run east and west along the harbour. There are also privately operated water taxis, a water bus, a boat sharing operation, electric rental boats and canal cruises, that transport people along Amsterdam's waterways. Regional buses, and some suburban buses, are operated by Connection and EBS. 
International coach services are provided by Eurolines from Amsterdam Amstel Railway Station, Idbus from Amsterdam Sloterdijk Railway Station, and Megabus from the Zuiderzuweg in the east of the city. In order to facilitate easier transport to the center of Amsterdam, the city has various P-plus-R locations where people can park their car at an affordable price and transfer to one of the numerous public transport lines. Chapter 8 Section 2 Car Amsterdam was intended in 1932 to be the hub, a kind of kilometer zero, of the highway system of the Netherlands, with freeways numbered 1 to 8 planned to originate from the city. The outbreak of the Second World War and shifting priorities led to the current situation, where only roads A1, A2, and A4 originate from Amsterdam according to the original plan. The A3 to Rotterdam was cancelled in 1970 in order to conserve the Groen Hart. Road A8, leading north to Zandam and the A10 Ring Road were opened between 1968 and 1974. Besides the A1, A2, A4 and A8, several freeways, such as the A7 and A6, carry traffic mainly bound for Amsterdam. The A10 ring road surrounding the city connects Amsterdam with the Dutch national network of freeways. Interchanges on the A10 allow cars to enter the city by transferring to one of the 18 city roads, numbered S101 through to S118. These city roads are regional roads without grade separation, and sometimes without a central reservation. Most are accessible by cyclists. The S100 Centremering is a small ring road circumnavigating the city's center. In the city center, driving a car is discouraged. Parking fees are expensive, and many streets are closed to cars or are one way. The local government sponsors car sharing and carpooling initiatives, such as Autodelen and Muiden.new. The local government has also started removing parking spaces in the city with the goal of removing 10,000 spaces by 2025. Chapter 8 Section 3, National Rail Amsterdam is served by 10 stations of the Nederlandse Spoorwegen. Five are intercity stops, Sloterdijk, Zert, Amstel, Bijlma Arena, and Amsterdam Central. The stations for local services are, Leelijlen, Rye, Holendrecht, Muirport, and Science Park. Amsterdam Central is also an international railway station. From the station there are regular services to destinations such as Austria, Belarus, Belgium, Czechia, Denmark, France, Germany, Hungary, Poland, Russia, Switzerland and the United Kingdom. Among these trains are international trains of the Nederlandse Spoorwegen, the Eurostar, Thales, and Intercity Express. Chapter 8 Section 4, Airport Amsterdam Airport Schiphol is less than 20 minutes by train from Amsterdam Central Station and is served by domestic and international intercity trains, such as Thales, Eurostar, and Intercity Brussel. Schiphol is the largest airport in the Netherlands, the third largest in Europe, and the 14th largest in the world in terms of passengers. It handles over 68 million passengers per year and is the home base of four airlines, KLM, Transavia, Martin Air, and Arkfly. As of 2014, Schiphol was the fifth busiest airport in the world measured by international passenger numbers. This airport is 4 meters below sea level. Although Schiphol is internationally known as Amsterdam Schiphol Airport it actually lies in the neighboring municipality of Haarlemmermeer southwest of the city. Chapter 8 Section 5, Cycling Amsterdam is one of the most bicycle-friendly large cities in the world and is a center of bicycle culture with good facilities for cyclists such as bike paths and bike racks, and several guarded bike storage garages which can be used. According to the most recent figures published by Central Bureau of Statistics, in 2015 the 442.693 households in Amsterdam together owned 847.000 bicycles, 1.91 bicycle per household. Previously, wildly different figures were arrived at using a wisdom of the crowd approach. Theft is widespread, in 2011, 
About 83,000 bicycles were stolen in Amsterdam. Bicycles are used by all socio-economic groups because of their convenience, Amsterdam's small size, the 400 kilometers of bike paths, the flat terrain, and the inconvenience of driving an automobile. Chapter 9, Education Amsterdam has two universities, the University of Amsterdam, and the Vrije University at Amsterdam. Other institutions for higher education include an art school, Gerrit Rietveld Academy, a University of Applied Sciences, the Hoogschool van Amsterdam, and the Amsterdamse Hoogschool voor de Kunsten. Amsterdam's International Institute of Social History is one of the world's largest documentary and research institutions concerning social history, and especially the history of the labor movement. Amsterdam's Hortus Botanicus, founded in the early 17th century, is one of the oldest botanical gardens in the world, with many old and rare specimens, among them the coffee plant that served as the parent for the entire coffee culture in Central and South America. There are over 200 primary schools in Amsterdam. Some of these primary schools base their teachings on particular pedagogic theories like the various Montessori schools. The biggest Montessori high school in Amsterdam, is the Montessori Lyceum Amsterdam. Many schools, however, are based on religion. This used to be primarily Roman Catholicism and various Protestant denominations, but with the influx of Muslim immigrants, there has been a rise in the number of Islamic schools. Jewish schools can be found in the southern suburbs of Amsterdam. Amsterdam is noted for having five independent grammar schools, the Vorsius Gymnasium, Barlius Gymnasium, St. Ignatius Gymnasium, Het 4E Gymnasium, and the Cygnus Gymnasium where a classical curriculum including Latin and classical Greek is taught. Though believed until recently by many to be an anachronistic and elitist concept, that would soon die out, the gymnasia have recently experienced a revival, leading to the formation of a fourth and fifth grammar school in which the three aforementioned schools participate. Most secondary schools in Amsterdam offer a variety of different levels of education in the same school. The city also has various colleges ranging from art and design to politics and economics which are mostly also available for students coming from other countries. Schools for foreign nationals in Amsterdam include the Amsterdam International Community School, British School of Amsterdam, Albert Einstein International School Amsterdam, Lycée Vincent van Gogh La Haye Amsterdam Primary Campus, International School of Amsterdam, and the Japanese School of Amsterdam. Chapter 10 Notable People Chapter 11 Media Amsterdam is a prominent center for national and international media. Some locally based newspapers include Het Parool, a national daily paper, De Telegraaf, the largest Dutch daily newspaper, the daily newspapers Trouw, De Volkskrant and NRC Handelsblad, De Groen Amsterdammer, a weekly newspaper, the free newspapers Metro and the Holland Times. Amsterdam is home to the second largest Dutch commercial TV group SBS Broadcasting Group, consisting of TV stations SBS 6, Net 5 and Veronica. However, Amsterdam is not considered the media city of the Netherlands. The town of Hilversum, 30 kilometers southeast of Amsterdam, has been crowned with this unofficial title. Hilversum is the principal center for radio and television broadcasting in the Netherlands. Radio Netherlands, heard worldwide via shortwave radio since the 1920s, is also based there. Hilversum is home to an extensive complex of audio and television studios belonging to the national broadcast production company Nose, as well as to the studios and offices of all the Dutch public broadcasting organizations and many commercial TV production companies. In 2012, the music video of Far East Movement, Live My Life, was filmed in various parts of Amsterdam. Also, several movies were filmed in Amsterdam, such as James Bond's Diamonds Are Forever, Ocean's Twelve, Girl with a Pearl Earring and The Hitman's Bodyguard. Amsterdam is also featured in John Green's book The Fault in Our Stars, which has been made into a film as well that partly takes place in Amsterdam. Chapter 12, Housing 
From the late 1960s onwards many buildings in Amsterdam have been squatted both for housing and for using as social centers. A number of these squats have legalized and become well known, such as Akiai, OT301, Paradiso and Vrankrij. Chapter 13, Sister Cities Manchester, United Kingdom, 2007 Zapopan, Mexico, 2011 Chapter 13 Section 1, Literature Burns, Jan, Dan, Joe Heizeit Watt, Dormstead om se Volkstall. The Hague, Busto? ISBN 978-9062917563. Friedhoff, Willem, Prack, Martin, Hashidinus van Amsterdam. Zelfburst State Star 1650-1813, Amsterdam, Sun, ISBN 978-9058751386. Mac, Gert, Inkleiner Hashidinus van Amsterdam, Amsterdam and Antwerp, Atlas, ISBN 978-9045019536. Charles Caspers and Peter Jan Margri, Het Miracle van Amsterdam. Biographie van een betwist devotee. Nusteling, Hubert, Welvaart en Werkgeligenheid in Amsterdam 1540-1860. In relays over demographie, a cornomi en social politique van in Weldstad, Amsterdam, de Bateuf Schleu, ISBN 978-9067070829. Remar, J.C., Middelpunt in der Bewoning in Nederland, Vorhin en Lands, Tag 2 e Seri, Vol. 38. Van Dillen, J.G., Bronnen tot de Hashidinus van het Bedridge Sleven en het Gilduzen van Amsterdam, The Hague. Van Leven, M. Erpen, J. Reconstructing the Demographic Regime of Amsterdam 1681-1920, Economic and Social History in the Netherlands, Volume 5, pages 61-102, HDL colon 10622-09251669, 1993, 001.